Hi everybody on YouTube, my name is Christian and I am from Puerto Rico. Um, I was born in Puerto Rico, but I did not grow up in Puerto Rico. I grew up in Dallas. And the truth is, I have always been interested in family history and anything dealing with family traditions. And I think probably because I didn't grow up in Puerto Rico. So what I would do is, I would, whenever my, my grandmothers would come and, and visit us in Dallas, I would kind of interview them. I would ask them all sorts of questions about who they were and their parents, their grandparents, um, how many children this this person have, et cetera, et cetera. And you know, in the very beginning of, of my questioning these two old ladies, they would always be like, I mean, why are you asking so many questions? Just, you know, go outside and play, you know, get a life, do something, right? But then by like the second or third question, they would be interested. All of a sudden, all these stories would come pouring out and it was so great. And I think subconsciously, I was memorizing these answers because every time they would come to visit, there was always some afternoon that I would go ahead and ask them these questions. So like I said, I started memorizing these answers. Um, and I gotta tell you, a little bit word of advice, if you're interested in family history or your family tree, which is what I was doing, that, without really meaning to, I was working on my family tree since I was a little boy, um, talk to the old people. Talk to your grandparents, talk to your great grandparents, because number one, there are a treasure of information. They, they know so much. That's number one. And number two, I think it makes them feel good, you know, um, that a young person is interested in their lives and is interested in, in what they have to say. And I can safely say without fear of successful contradiction <laughs> that and my brothers are probably going to kill me for saying this is that I, I think I, I had a, a bond with them, with my grandmothers, that perhaps my brothers and my cousins didn't have because I was interested in them as people, not just as grandmothers. And that was really, really, really cool. Here's the deal. So I memorized all these answers from these two old ladies, right? And then I discovered Ancestry.com. I have to be perfectly honest, I did not want to join Ancestry.com. I'm too cheap. I did not want to spend the money. I wanted to do it the old fashioned way like Alex Haley did and talk to people and discover um, documents in churches and stuff like that, you know, like just kind of like that. But of course, that's a bunch of bull. <laughs> so um, I joined Ancestry.com and I have to tell you that with the information that I got from my grandmothers and from my great grandmother, I forgot to mention her, I was able to go back like six or, gener six or seven generations within one afternoon. It was crazy. I don't know whose house Ancestry.com rated. And by the way, they're not paying me for this. They're not sponsoring any of this. I paid for this. I paid for my membership. They didn't give me any money. They're not giving me any money right now for saying what I have to say. But they've got so much information, so many documents, passport pictures, all this stuff which I didn't even know existed uh, within my family. Um, so like I said, I went back so many generations it was crazy and every day I go on there and I get more hints and, and I've discovered so much about my family. So I highly recommend Ancestry.com. However, I have run into a couple of walls which is the reason why I took the DNA test and I'm still waiting on the results. What I knew about my family before joining Ancestry.com was that um, I had one great grandfather that either was born in the Canary Islands or his family was from the Canary Islands. That's all I knew about him. And then I had a great grandmother who even though she was born in Puerto Rico, I was told her family was originally from Venezuela. And I was also told the family narrative, I'm talking like I know what I'm talking about now. Uh, the family narrative is that her people were not only from Venezuela, they were indigenous people from Venezuela. So I knew that about her. And then there is this stuff about my other grandmother in that whenever I would talk to her about her family, she always said to me, and this sounds really weird, it sounded really strange to me as a little boy, she would always say, my, within my family, everyone married each other. Now I was little and I knew right from wrong. I knew, to me, that didn't sound right, <laughs> okay? So I joined Ancestry.com, I put in all my information and I was able to go back on one side of my family back to the 1600s and on the other side like to the mid 1700s or something. So here's what I found about my family. I couldn't believe it. I have one branch that goes straight to an area of Spain called Albacete. That's Castilian. I'm Puerto Rican so I would say Albacete. 
I have one line that goes straight to Castilla-La Mancha in Albacete. Then I have got the other one um, with my great-grandfather from the Canary Islands. That's one of the walls that I have run into because I have very little information on this guy. Um, I can't find much information other than one brother and his parents. So I don't know where to go with that. And then the, the situation with my great-grandmother from Venezuela, yes, it's all correct. She was born in Puerto Rico, but her, but her family was from Venezuela. And uh, so apparently I have Venezuelan relatives. And um, what is it? I have not been able to find specifically if they were indigenous, indigenous or not. But through Ancestry, I have seen um, passport pictures of some of these people. And to me, they look, they look indigenous, beautiful, dark people. Obviously, some of it faded away, but still, it's apparently in me. Then there is a situation with my grandmother and with the people that all married each other. Okay, one word, it's called inbreeding, okay? Um, within my grandmother's family, from what I have been able to find out, for about almost 300 years, there were only three last names in her family. Three last names, why? Because everyone kept on marrying each other and, and the last names kept on repeating themselves. So, um, for instance, this is a perfect example of my grandmother's side of the family, okay? Her parents, her father married his as first cousin's daughter. So he married his second cousin, okay? Had kids with her. She up and dies. So then he, what does he do? He marries her sister. So he married his other second cousin. Had kids with her, including my grandmother. So my grandmother had half brothers and sisters that were also her first cousins. And then on one side of the family, she had a set of grandparents that on the other side were her great grandparents. It is crazy. I, I, I couldn't believe it. It took me forever to figure that out because apparently back in the day, people were not very um, creative with first names. Okay, like within one family, you would have five Marias and because they were all named after the grandmother, but they would be like Maria Teresa, Maria del Carmen, Maria de Los Angeles, whatever. It was so confusing. And back in the day, the men were all named either Jose or Luis, it'd be Jose Enrique, Jose Luis, Luis Enrique, whatever. And because they all share the same last name, it made it such a headache for me trying to figure out, am I, am I seeing the right person or am I seeing their great grandfather? It was crazy. So if you're into that kind of stuff, move out of town, okay? If your cousin begins to look kind of cute to you, start going to a different church because 50, 60 years from now, you're gonna have a descendant who's gonna be really angry because they could not figure out the documents. It was crazy, but very, very, very interesting, I must say. Okay, now, you may be looking at me and you may be thinking, uh, he's Puerto Rican, what's, what's up with that? Yes, I am Puerto Rican, okay? I am 100% Puerto Rican. No, not everybody can look like Ricky Martin. Not everybody can look like Jennifer Lopez. Some of us actually look like this. Okay, we are so diverse in Latin America. We're so incredibly diverse in Latin America, but especially in the Caribbean. And I have to say, especially in Cuba and in Puerto Rico, we're really, really, really diverse. Um, some of us look like this. There are some areas of Puerto Rico where you'll go there and you're not gonna see anybody that looks like me. The, most of the people in those areas may be black. Then you will go to the for instance, the interior of the island or the western coast of the island. And you may see a lot of people that look like this. The rest of the island, it's a little bit of everything. We are so mixed and we're so proud of that mixture. So, you know, the fact that I look like this doesn't make me any less Puerto Rican than anybody else. So yeah, no, we're really diverse in Puerto Rico. Um, within my family, I have to say, um, most everyone in my family is kind of a, a a variation of this. No, not everyone in my family has got blue eyes. That's not what I mean. I mean, we are a Hispanic family, so most of the people in my family do have brown hair and brown eyes. However, that doesn't mean that within my family, blue eyes or gray eyes are uncommon. They're not. Every now and then you may find a, a very light-haired person. Redheads in my family. I, there's a number of people in my family that have got red hair or reddish hair. Where that came from, I don't know. I guess the DNA test is gonna tell me. I think one of the reasons why we're so diverse in Puerto Rico, since that's where I'm from, that's what I can talk about, is that 
the people in Puerto Rico are really, all of us in Puerto Rico technically came from someplace else. Even the Taino people that were in Puerto Rico, uh, when the Spanish showed up, they were originally from the northern coast of Venezuela and they took over the islands in the Caribbean from other folks that had been there before them. So the Tainos had been in Puerto Rico for a few thousand years, living peacefully from what I have been told, except for these guys named the Caribes that were coming in from the Lesser Antilles. And um, it's a shame that that whole area, that whole region is named after these other guys, the Caribes, because apparently they were cannibals. Um, when in fact, most of the Caribbean was still Taino when the Spanish showed up. When the white man from Spain showed up, he brought with him um, abuse, slavery, greed, and diseases, lots of diseases. And within a few generations, the Taino people in the Caribbean as a whole were wiped out. 80 to 90% of the Tainos in the Caribbean were wiped out. However, in Puerto Rico, a lot of them did survive. And those that were strong enough to survive intermixed with the Spanish colonists that were coming in from Europe and from the Canary Islands. Then you have the massive numbers of people coming in from Africa when, you know, the Europeans basically kidnapped innocent people from that continent and brought them over to, to the Americas as slaves. So again, now we have three groups of people in Puerto Rico intermixing, just making it all nice and juicy. And then there is a portion of history that a lot of Puerto Ricans here on YouTube either forget or maybe they're not really aware of. And that is the fact that in the 19th century, Spain opened up immigration to Puerto Rico. Um, that means any European, as long as they were Catholic and they were coming from a country that uh, was friendly with Spain, they could come to Puerto Rico and they were given a piece of land. So in the 19th century, there was a mass immigration coming to the island of Puerto Rico. Still, 60%, 60 percent, 60 something percent of the people that were immigrating to Puerto Rico in the 19th century were still from mainland Spain or from the Canary Islands. However, the remaining 40 percent, a good chunk of them came from French speaking parts of the world. Not only France, but Corsica. Thousands of Corsicans came to Puerto Rico. Um, French people from Haiti also came when Haiti became independent. Um, also, Louisiana, when the U.S got a hold of Louisiana with the Louisiana Purchase, a lot of French people and Spanish people that were living in that area also moved on over to Puerto Rico. We also have people that are of Dutch descent, um, Irish descent, lots of Irish descent, German descent, Italians. You take all these ingredients, okay, uh, along with the major ones, which are Spain and the Canary Islands, um, the native people, the Taino people, and the Africans. You put all that stuff in with all those little ingredients that I just mentioned, you let that mess simmer for a couple of hundred years and that's how you get people like me. So I took the test a couple of weeks ago and um, they it just arrived, I think it was yesterday or something like that because Ancestry.com uh, gives you like a little email. So I'm all excited. So now I have to wait like six or eight weeks, whatever it is that they say. It may take a little bit longer because of the Christmas holidays. So the next time you see me, hopefully I will have results. My predictions on this, are the following. I'm probably so wrong, <laughs> uh, but I'm thinking you'll never know, right? Okay, so what I'm thinking is this. Again, I could be so wrong, I'm probably making an ass of myself. I'm thinking 60% <laughs> European, most of it from the Mediterranean, Okay, I mean, if I get back like 95% Scandinavian, I know something is wrong, okay? So 60% European, mostly from the, from the Mediterranean region. Um, then I'm gonna keep it simple. I'm gonna say 20% Native American because I figure that if my great grandmother, if, if it's true that her people were actually indigenous people from Venezuela, that would be 12.5%. But I know I'm not gonna get all of that. But if I add whatever I get from her, along with whatever I'm getting from the other branches in my family, maybe that's 20% Native American. And then the other 20%, I'm going to say African. Yeah, I'm gonna say the other 20% African. Within that 20% African, I'm going to say perhaps about half, maybe a little bit less than half, North African, and then the rest, Sub-Saharan African. 
Now, why do I make that distinction? Well, it's because I've learned something from watching other videos on YouTube of people getting their DNA tests done. And that is that 23andMe and Ancestry DNA, which is the test that I took, look at North Africa differently. Ancestry DNA looks at North Africa, geographically speaking, as part of Africa, which makes sense. That's part of Africa, right? However, 23andMe places North Africa with the Middle East because I guess they look at North Africa to be closer ethnically and, um, and culturally with the Middle East than with the rest of Africa. So I was like, I don't get this. I don't know why they would try to make such a distinction. This is very confusing. So I had to go ahead and put on my little like Latin American hat and try to like understand it from my own point of view. And I used Mexico. Yeah, Mexico, geographically speaking, geographically speaking, okay, Mexico is part of North Africa. I assume not part of North Africa. Mexico is part of North America. Geographically speaking, Mexico, um, the United States, and Canada make up North America. However, culturally and ethnically, Mexico is part of Latin America, so it belongs to us, right? So once I looked at it that way, then I kind of understood what this whole situation with North Africa. Now, if you're Hispanic like myself and you're of some Spanish descent, I'm probably gonna be like a lot of Spanish descent, but you know, whatever. But if you're of Spanish descent or if you're from Spain, chances are you are going to have North African DNA in you. Why? Because the Moors were in Spain for eight centuries and the Moors were from North Africa or rather originally from the Middle East and then they little by little started moving into North Africa. Also, the Canary Islands, um, the people in the Canary Islands, their origins before the Spanish took over the Canary Islands, they were Berbers. So as a Hispanic, if you're Hispanic and you're watching this and you have Spanish blood, chances are you're going to show North African DNA. However, if you are a Hispanic person like myself from the Caribbean, you're also going to show Sub-Saharan DNA. I'm hoping, otherwise, you know, they'll take my Caribbean card away. So those are my predictions. Again, I'm saying 60% European, mostly from the Mediterranean, yeah? 20% Native American and 20% African. And uh, about half of that, I'm gonna say, North African, and then the other half, maybe like eight to 12%, Sub-Saharan Africa. I don't know what's gonna happen. I don't know, I don't know, I don't even really know what to expect. What I'm really hoping to do with this DNA test is to be able to match up with other relatives um, just so I can continue working on my family tree because like I said earlier in the video, I've run to some walls. I want to go ahead and end this now by saying once again, Ancestry did not pay me for any of this. Ancestry has absolutely nothing to do with any of this. If you work for Ancestry and you want to go ahead and kick back a couple of bucks to me, hey, I'll go ahead and take it because you have all my money. But um, yeah, so we will see what my spit has to say in the next six to eight weeks. So I hope that you'll be around and check it out when I get my results.